So I'm by no means a mathematician. So this video was a real headache to make. I'm not even sure that I really understand half of the points that I'm trying to make here. So mathematicians out there, please correct me in the comments. And remember that I'm sorry and send help. Hello everyone, my name is Reese and welcome to my channel. Mathematics, the study of numbers and basic forms. Math is not something that comes naturally to every sim, but those that learn to understand it can see the patterns and science all around them and have uncanny insight into the mechanical and logical. So the first year your sim is going to take is a freshman year and here the first semester class is called Remedial Addition, the Fingers and Toes Technique. So this class name is a perfect example of this quirky humor that I love The Sims 2 for because on the surface it sounds like a basic math course designed for students who are like really struggling um, with addition and the word remedial hints that this is a kind of catch-up class that you would take if you maybe was falling behind or if you had to catch up with the basic maths before joining university. But to me, it is the subtle, the fingers and toes technique that really brings home the joke because it's a playful jab at the way young children or adults who aren't exactly math whizzes sometimes count by using their fingers and their toes. So of course here the humor lies in the contradiction. You're here on university level and you're treating basic additions like an advanced topic. But after learning the basics, your sim has reached the second semester class and here the class is called P equals NP and other straightforward proofs. So this is very foreign to me, but the class name here is a good example on again the game's nerdy humor and it is directly referencing one of the most famous open problems in computer science and mathematics the P versus NP problem. So to explain it simply, and I really had to do that because I had no idea myself what this problem was, but the P versus NP problem asks whether every problem whose solution can be verified quickly in polynomial time, that is the NP part, can also be solved quickly, and that is the P part. So it sounds a bit abstract, but it is incredibly important, apparently, because it deals with the limits of what computers can do efficiently. So it underpins everything from cryptography to algorithm design. And despite decades of work, no one has been able to prove whether P equals NP. So it's widely considered one of the hardest and most important questions in theoretical computer science. And in fact, it's apparently one of the Millennium Prize problems, which means that there is a million dollar prize for anyone who can solve it. And I guess that this is where the joke lands because the phrase and other straightforward proofs is of course pure sarcasm because the joke is that P equals NP is not straightforward. It's mind-bendingly difficult and by calling it a straightforward proof, the class name is deliberately and absurdly downplaying the difficulty as if it's just another item on a basic homework list. So I think that this class name is a parody on how intimidating academic courses and language can be and how it plays with the gap between the casual sounding title and the actual depth of the subject matter. But even though most of us already have a headache by this point, your sim has only reached this sophomore year. And here the first semester class is called PEMDAS and U. And I guess it could also be pronounced P-E-M-D-A-S and U. But the class name is again a playful nod to one of the most basic and often misunderstood concepts in arithmetic, the order of operation. And I guess that it's called arithmetic or 
arithmetics. Um, yeah, this is probably one of those words and I'm going to pronounce incorrectly a few times uh, during this video. So please bear with me. So P-E-M-D-A-S or PEMDAS is an acronym that helps students remember the correct sequence in which to solve parts of a math expression. So P is parenthesis, E is exponents, MD is multiplication and division from left to right, and AS is addition and subtraction from left to right. So this acronym is a classic tool used in elementary and middle school, especially in the USA, to avoid mistakes like adding before multiplying or ignoring parentheses. And here I think the joke lies in the exaggerated seriousness of the course name, PEMDAS and You, which make it sound like a self-help book or a public service announcement. And I kind of guess it is because it is very helpful. But it is being presented as something deeply personal or life-changing to you, which is of course funny when you remember that it's literally just a rule for solving math problems. The second semester class is called Stabbing Robert Hortz, Dividing by Zero. So this class name is a funny mashup of sci-fi absurdity and mathematical cat catastrophe. And I guess that it's packed with layers of geeky references that I initially didn't get. So let's try to break it down because this part sounds like something straight out of a cheesy sci-fi movie. But it isn't just sci-fi flair, it sets up the apocalyptic tone of the punchline. So here is where the math joke comes in. Dividing by zero is one of the most notorious don'ts in mathematics. It's undefined and attempting it, even metaphorically, has become a kind of geek joke, often treated as something that could break the universe or cause reality to collapse. And in programming, trying to divide by zero can crash a system. So in theoretical discussions, it leads to nonsensical or infinite results. And I guess it does sound quite sci-fi, right? So it has become kind of a classic trope, apparently in math and internet culture, that if you divide by zero, catastrophic consequences might follow. But now your sim has reached the junior year, and here the first class is called 3D Geometry, Reimagining the Plum Bob. So this is a clever meta reference that blends real mathematics with the iconic symbol from the sims universe, the Plum Bob, above the head of the sims. So let's try to unpack the layers of the joke here, because in real life a Plum Bob is a pointed weight on a string used by builders and architects to find a vertical line. So it is a simple but quite ancient tool rooted in geometry and physics. So the plumbub is that instantly recognizable green diamond that floats above your active sim's head. So it's a symbol of control. When it's green, your sim is happy. When it turns red, things are going terribly. And it is one of the most iconic visuals in the franchise. So the class name refers to the study of three-dimensional shapes, surfaces, vectors, and spatial relationships, a serious mathematics subject. And in game development and design, 3D geometry is also essential for modeling objects in virtual space. So I think this is a meta joke by the Sims creators, because this has so much to do with actually shaping the game that it would of course make great sense to include in the game as a mathematical course. And I guess it also hints to the very revolutionary time of The Sims 2, because this was such a huge gap from the first Sims game, and reimagining the plumb up sounds like a high-minded academic exploration of the symbol, but I think that it is just a matter of the great fuss that the release of this game created. And please don't get me wrong, I was such a part of this fuss as well. I loved it. But the second semester class is called Reasoning with Irrational Numbers. So the class name 
is a subtle blend of mathematical terminology and wordplay that pokes fun at logic, human behavior, and maybe even academia itself. Because what are irrational numbers? Well, I had to figure that out myself too. Because in mathematics, irrational numbers are real numbers that cannot be expressed as a simple fraction. So that decimal expansions go on forever without repeating. And classic examples include the pi, the Euler's number, and the square root of two. And I'm not going to go further into this because I'm not able to, but if I have some mathematicians on the line, please <laughs> take your time to explain it in the comments so someone like me could understand it. I dare you. But these numbers are called irrational, not because they're wild or nonsensical, but because they defy the logic of clean fractional expression. So, well, despite their name, irrational numbers are very real and extremely important in maths. So on the surface of this joke, it sounds like a legitimate course title, maybe one dealing with proofs and limits or advanced number theory, but the humor comes from the double meaning of the word irrational, because to me at least it means not logical or not reasonable. Um, but in maths, it does mean something else. But phew, that was a hard one. And your sim has finally reached the senior year. And here the first class is called Mathematics in Nature, Pine Cones and the Golden Ratio. So this class name is a direct reference to the real mathematical patterns found in nature particularly the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio, and it plays on the Ave-inspiring way that math often underpins the beauty of nature. So if we first go into the golden ratio, this is an irrational number. It's found by taking two quantities, AA and BB, and I don't think I'll be able to explain this further, so look it up if you care. But the ratio has been associated for centuries with aesthetics, with art, with architecture, and, well, most relevant here, with natural patterns. And I guess I can't really go around talking about the pine cone because uh, the Fibonacci numbers are uh, numbers of spirals, I think, and I really would not try to go further into this as well. But pine cones specific this spiral when you look at their scales and the number of spirals in each direction typically matches the Fibonacci numbers and the same patterns show up in sunflower seeds arrangements and in pineapples and in shells and in galaxy and broccolis. So this class name is really an in-depth illustration of how seemingly complex or chaotic natural forms are often governed by well, quite complex mathematical principles. But as if it isn't getting more complicated, your sim has now reached the second and last semester. It's called 1337 ways to write a lemma or 1337 ways to write a lemma. So apparently this is a reference to internet culture specifically referencing the lead or the number 1337 that originated in hacker and gaming communities. And apparently those were communities that I am not part of because I've never heard about this before. But the number 1337 is a playful form of elite, which is commonly used in lead speak, a stylized writing system used by some internet subcultures, particularly hackers and gamers, and it substitutes numbers and characters for letter. In this case, 1337 is used to represent lead by replacing the L with an I, E with a 3, and T with a 7. So it is a playful way to show off, often used ironically to suggest a sense of superiority or advanced skill. Um, but yeah, I'm obviously not very advanced then. 
But lemma is in mathematics a proven proposition or theorem used as a stepping stone to prove a larger result. So it is a technical term common in advanced mathematics, often referring to a small intermediate result within a proof. And lemmas are not usually the main event, but it serves as crucial pieces of larger mathematical arguments. So the humor in this class name is the combination of 1337, this elite hacker culture, whatever, with lemma, formal mathematical terminology that creates an, I guess, amusing contrast between the informal subcultural coolness of being a hacker and the dry technical nature of writing a lemma. So this is really an inside joke that I guess only true mathematicians would get. And yeah, that was not me. But now your sim has a major in mathematics. So let's see what skills he or she needed to get there. Because they needed four mechanical skills to pass, one charisma skill, five logic skills, four creativity skills, and four cleaning skills. And if we dive into the mechanical skills, I think it's likely like a reference to the practical application of math like how engineering relies on mathematical concepts. And it plays on the idea that math isn't just theoretical, it's used in hands-on problem solving, like fixing machines and in programming, of course. So the game here humorously blends abstract math with practical mechanical tasks, referring to the overlap between math and engineering. So the very low charisma skills needed to pass in mathematics is a funny reference to the stereotypical um, nerds. Let's just put it that way. Um, because math focused uh, people, and of course I, I'm having a hard time saying this because I'm not a math people myself or a math person. So I'm not trying to be rude here, but this stereotype is that people being really good at mathematics are maybe less socially skilled or awkward in communication. And in pop culture, mathematicians and scientists are sometimes portrayed as so absorbed in abstract ideas that they struggle with social interactions. So I think that this stereotype is the reason for a very low charisma skill. But then on the other hand, we have a quite high logic skill, and that is a direct reference to the critical thinking and the problem solving nature of mathematics, I think, because logic is essential in mathematic reasoning, as it helps, of course, with forming proofs and solving equations, and maths are just logic. So if you have logical thinking, I think you'll be good at maths as well. Because the logic skill highlight the importance of structure and rational thinking. And then your sim needs creativity. And I think that that is a reference to the idea that mathematics isn't just about rigid rules. It also involves creative thinking. Because many breakthroughs in math, like new theories or problem-solving approaches, require a level of imagination and unconventional thinking. Because the game might be suggesting that mathematical minds need creativity to think outside of the box and to come up with innovative solutions, blending, you know, art and science in unexpected ways. Think Da Vinci. And then your sim needs cleaning skills. And I think that that is a reference to how, again, mathematicians are often stereotyped as being obsessive or detail-oriented. So just as the mathematician might meticulously clean or organize their workspace to focus on complex problems, this could be playing on the idea that someone in mathematics would have a love for structure in math that could spill over into a need for cleanness and tidiness outside of their profession. But that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And please, if you can elaborate, 
let me know in the comments. I would really appreciate that. And stay tuned for other videos. Bye!